why I can't again. Earth keeper, earth keeper. Your feet are wet from many lands. Keep your heart clean and you will see the unseen. Saishale, why you can't okay? Carried over nation's water. Saishale. Hello, you guys. Yep, it's Friday again, 3 p.m. And this is Farida Gibson Burt, your host at New Heart Transformation on Soma Fusion Media. I'm just going to chat a little bit today with the beautiful, fabulous Katie. She is like the queen. She's the one that allows this to happen for me, for us. Um, she has Soma Fusion Media. She does a whole bunch of other stuff, which you guys are going to find out about maybe today, but most definitely another time when I have her on again um anyways beautiful soul here uh to chat we're just gonna chat hi katie hi how are you i'm great i'm awesome great. i'm like i don't know where i am right now <laughs> i know you you're you've been on a whirlwind like oh. But we have outside noise <laughs> and that's okay that's life i love that flow because I you know didn't really have a plan for today but I'm so glad that you're available and that you wanted to do this I've kind of pushed for it because I know you've been doing a lot like you have so many things that you do and you have kids I am like the queen of queens like and I don't mean that in a literal sense or an egotistical way it's it's just that you know it's it's kind of like I got my finger in every pie, but I succeed in every pie that I have my finger in. And I, you know, I, I, I believe in, in nothing that there's nothing out there that's impossible for any of us to achieve or do in our lives. So um, with that said, I mean, there, there are, there are so many accomplishments that I'm uh, and barriers that I've had in my entire lifetime that I've had to break through in order to get, um to where i am right now and mm -hmm. uh you know every time that i have someone come up to me and say hey there is an opportunity it's like i've always had that mentality of you know i if if i see an open door i'm going to take that opportunity because if that opportunity uh you know closes on me then where am i going to be at right and I see every opportunity as an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to to go somewhere, wherever that may be, um, an opportunity to to be whoever I want to be at that particular time. And that's so awesome because that's like what's just been happening with me is like in terms of it's not even manifesting. It's just like life occurring for me, you know, because I'm in the flow and I I don't um I don't worry about what's to come. I just, if something comes up, the opportunity comes up, boom, go. Like um, just the other day, I um, was like, I want an office for my hypnotherapy business and I wanted to have a lake view. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not too much to ask, right? <laughs> Usually lake views come with a huge price. So, you know, one could choose to believe that it's impossible or not and so i chose to believe that it's not impossible <laughs> right and so an office did come available that did have a lake view but it was with kind of this freaky lady who's the landlord and i was like no this is not working this is not going to work for me and so i was like okay just let it go and just still understand that your lake view office is coming i was like okay sure no problem and um a friend of mine had an office ages ago and she invited me to do massage out of her office. And I was like, oh yeah. And I never did. And then she got rid of her office. Well, lo and behold, <laughs> I'm driving past the office and there's a sign that says for rent. I was like, holy shiboli, I called it right away. And um, it sort of all fell into place that day. And then I, as I went to go look inside, I was like, oh my goodness, I had a dream that I had a successful business out of this office. And duh, the office has a lake view. Now I, you know? now I understand that you have your own little, little announcement that you have done this week as well. 
That's correct. I am now a certified master hypnotist. Woohoo! Next step is certified master certified hypnotherapist, actually. So this is the first part of being a hypnotherapist. So thank you for reminding me to tell my beautiful listeners that. <laughs> when, when do you start hypnotherapy? Um, my office is open July 1st, but I am taking clients right now. There you go. Mm-hmm. They can contact me directly. There you go. I was going to say, plug yourself. Yeah. 530-448-1354. And it's, um, it's pretty easy. It's new heart transformation hypnotherapy. And I'm getting my web page together and all those things you know, the details. Yeah. 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 You have a pretty big one yourself too, right? We're just sharing here. So let's share mama. (laughs) Well, for me. Yeah. No, I, 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 I completed, um, well, actually it wasn't this week, but I, I received my certificates regarding, um, my, my doctorate. Um, so now I officially am a doctor in psychology. Um, um, however, I am, it's not clinical psychology. So in other words, I'm, I'm not in cl- a therapy inclined. I'm more about teaching, uh, which is exactly what you see in all of my work in terms of, uh, my radio shows, my writings, my, uh, the writings that I have been unseen by the public, um, in terms <laughs> of my papers, uh, I've written over 600 articles. I mean, I'm, at this, at this point, I'm, I'm just like, okay, so what, what's next? And I'm looking at myself and I'm going, what's next? Oh, maybe I should go get my professorship because I really, really want to teach. And for me, it's not about having a title. I mean, yes, I am Reverend Dr. Katie, Katie Kamara, but it's not, about, it's not about my titles. I'm not about my titles whatsoever. As much as it sounds good, it really does. Mm-hmm. Um, and it adds a little prestige and uh, status to my work, but I'm not all about that. I'm more about what I can proactively do in the community. In fact, when I went, to, when I started out in college, um, I preferred trade school over uh, over college because um, I didn't realize how smart I was back then, honestly. honestly. <laughs> um, and so I went to trade school, and I. Be- I was trained in community development um, as a project manager for developing communities. And so that is my, that's where I was at my foundation and my background. And so I just developed it right up until, until I went to university. And I mean, I don't know, I could sit here and talk about all of my education, but I'm not going to sit here and talk about my education because it's pointless. Because if you're not proactively doing uh doing or being about your education or putting forth what you've done what you've done in a lifetime it's just like you saying oh i'm a a hypnotherapist but you're not actually doing hypnotherapy right right so uh for me it's always been a lifelong dream to uh be very very community oriented uh in fact when i was 17 out of all the trials and tribulations of life um, everything, I mean, you've got to remember that I am a person that has been through 29 years of domestic violence, sexual abuse, uh, and child abuse. So, um, when I was 17, I actually did my, dedicated myself to humanity in, mm. and humanitarian plight because I didn't, I believed that, uh, through my experiences that I could help change other people or help re- right. rewrite the comic uh, the negative karma that that was associated with people who have just tried to jump over massive mountains in trying to recover mm-hmm. themselves from from whatever trauma they've ever, have ever been through in a lifetime. See, that's why I love these open conversations because I wouldn't have guessed that that's what we would be talking about because you are, uh, from my experience with you, such a strong woman. And you, you do, you fluff and buff and get it off and you do the work that you need to, to release the things that you need and you don't let it keep you down. You just, you bounce right back up and you know, it's really inspiring for me to watch your process and, and be a part of what's occurring with you. For me, for me though, it's really, um, 
I'm not, I'm not saying that I am I am perfect and I have my good and my bad days and and uh, my associations and and whatnot and I, and but you know what at the end of the day I acknowledge that I accept that for who I am you know all those other people out there that don't accept that it's it's like it's like okay well it's not my problem you know I'm me take it take me as or leave me it's it's not a problem to me. I'm still going to continue doing the things I do, regardless of whether you like it or not. And so I am prone, you know, just from just from the things that I do and the, the accomplishments that I've had and the successes that I've had, you know, I attract, I understand that I attract a lot of people that are aha, mm. heavily traumatized and they don't know how to, and they leech on to, you know, like energetic vampirism, you know, re really, really negative, negative stuff like jealousy and hatred. And, but has anybody ever thought about emulating a person, not copying them, but actually seeing, seeing what they do and actually trying to uh, come, you know, go about and try and do it for themselves in order to, be, some, be something better than what they already are. It's all, life is about growth. Life is about accepting that we are who we are and then growing from that and making the changes that is needed in order to, whether it be to survive, but survive with that victim mentality, but also survive um, to get through life. As, you know, it's not supposed to be perfect. We're all supposed to be learning lessons. We're I don't know how many times I've had people come up to me and say, um, I want to help people. I would love to help people. And I'm like, and the, they recognize that there is a lot of things that is going on within them that, um, that, you know, can be otherwise seen as trauma, trauma. They, but um, I, I question those people and I tell them, I said, well, you know what? you want to help people. I said, why do you want to help people? And they'll go down the rabbit rabbit hole of why they are, oh, but I've had these experiences. I've had these, I've been through this and I think I can help people. And, uh, you know, I've got to reach out to so many people because I can change lives, but it's not about that. You cannot, as a therapist, and you would agree for it, that if you, um, if you are uh, someone who has been through trauma and hasn't properly worked through themselves, how are you supposed to help another person? It's like, how do you love somebody else if you can't love yourself? It's goes exactly. to philosophy. And so I see a lot of people in the community that are very, very, I want to go out and help people and I'm going to do it in a big way, but they haven't worked on themselves. And therefore what en ends up happening is that they're projecting their own trauma onto other people, expecting them to change. Yeah. It doesn't work. That projection is a huge, huge thing. Um, those that hurt people, hurt people. Is that the saying? Yeah. Yeah. So if, if they haven't done their work, <laughs> It's just super awesome to um, hear you talk about that. And um, I'm wondering as I'm listening, like what was your, what would you say was the greatest um, thing that you have to share to someone who has been through those abusive situations in terms of pulling through, in terms of, you know, your self-worth, um, and you know what I'm saying? Your self-worth and pulling through it and knowing that it's not your fault, knowing that you didn't do anything to it took, quote unquote deserve it. It took me a long time to realize that I, it wasn't my fault and that everything that I was doing was, was perfectly fine and natural for me to uh, go through the emotion and the experiences that were associated with the traumas and abu or the abuse in, in, in terms of uh, how far it went. My wake up call was when I, um, when when I was in my head um, on the brink of, of death, or what could be assumed on the brink of death, and so, without going into detail, um, I really got to kick up the butt uh, about you know, I got to do more. I, there's there's something about there's something about having a 
uh, being on the brink of death or being um, close to it that that wakes you up and says, well, no, 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 I've got a life to live. I need to live. And the one thing that I, I find a lot too is that um, for someone like me, I didn't know how to live life because I was living on somebody else's accord, something, living under somebody else's rules, living controlled. Um, I, I, all I knew was to work and obey and serve. And, and so I had to recognize and realize uh, that one, I was an active participant in, in that controlling situation, but also recognize too that I am not, I'm not, I'm a sovereign person and that I have my own thoughts. I have my own worth. I have my own values and I have my own voice and that voice needs to be heard. It's like the, the, the story of the caged bird. How do we break out of that cage, that caged bird scenario? We have to acknowledge the fact that we are a willing participant and so that we can open up the door because for many years, for me, I saw a revolving door. I didn't know a way out. I didn't, I under, I underestimated my own value. I under, I, I put down my own self-esteem, my own worth to the point where I just could not think for myself. And I had people controlling me. I, I every, uh, I took negative criticism, very, very personal. Um, I, I, you know, every, I, I was in, in the defensive mode. I was always argumentative. I was always somebody that um, that had to retaliate because I needed my voice heard. And once I realized that, oh shoot, I am my own woman. I can do my own thing. I can I can be independent. And I never really needed anybody to actually tell me what to do whatsoever. That's when I stood up for myself and I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to teach other people how to do it. The one thing that a lot of people lack is resiliency. And resiliency is what we have when we build the courage up to understand who we are as people and be brave and bold to go out and say, hey, this is no longer affecting me anymore. This is what another person says to me is, is okay. Okay. That's their point. That's their personal situation. That's their personal thought. That's their opinion. And it's no longer going to affect me. Um, about 10 years ago, I was, I was taught about um, a, what's, a, what's called a, a Teflon heart. I don't know if you know what that is. Teflon, a Teflon heart is somebody that, um, that can be given. So you could talk crap about me all day long. And a Teflon heart is when I hear it, it's going to repel off, off of that. So Teflon being nonstick. So, tef so you can tell me all you want about me. Nine times out of 10 is not going to be about me because it's just your judgment on me. And so a Teflon heart is me rejecting that and saying, hey, hey I'm going to be happy. That's it. Whatever. That's amazing. I love that lesson, you know, and then um, another thing that you're reminding me of is, uh, well, I don't know who the poem was written by, probably, I would say, uh, Rumi or somebody like that, is um, they, they have their own thoughts, which they're talking about children, they have their own thoughts, they are the sons and daughters of life longing for itself. And so for me, the greatest thing that I feel like I've learned is that I am life longing for itself. I am life longing for itself. So when I took the time to be quiet, it, it came up, you know, exactly as it was meant to be because it was just longing for itself. So the same thing with Rumi, what you're seeking is seeking you. So it's just such a beautiful, beautiful representation of allowing that flow. And, and thank you so much again for taking this time to talk because okay. what, you're, what you're bringing forth is exactly what Spirit wanted. And that's exactly why I didn't have a pre-record. I didn't have this. I, I was supposed to talk to Katie because <laughs> how beautiful what you're saying is in the Teflon heart. I mean, what a great gift for our listeners. You know, it's, you know. You can say what you want, but it'll bounce off. 
the other thing that I do want to mention too is about uh, climbing the mountain. M many of us climb mountains and we get to the top. What happens when we get to the top? Do we know? Do you know? Uh, hopefully, you don't fall down. <laughs> okay, well, that's part of it. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so, what, when you get to the top, is there a piece? What do we find at the top of the mountain? Uh, yourself in peace. Okay, what happens after that? Mm, do you have the power to follow through? Yeah, in a way, yeah. But usually nine times out of ten, the, the populist vote would be, I'm going to go down, go back down the mountain. Mm. But then only to find out that we have to climb back up the mountain. <laughs> we have that. So we go up and down all the time. But how many of us, let me put forth this question, how many of us can get to the top of the mountain and see beyond the sun? Because seeing beyond the sun is the world of possibility. Yes. That's amazing. And that's when we can acclaim that there is beyond knowing, beyond truth, beyond whatever it is that we are seeking. And when we are seeking beyond what is that unknown, then we can find out a world, a very, very different world to what we know than outside of going down, back down a mountain only to climb it again. The great beyond. Isn't that um, that kid's uh, dinosaur thing? What is that one? With Petrie and all of them. Uh, they're going to the great beyond. I've been telling I've been telling that analogy for a very 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 long time I just you know because I use it to, as a, a a teaching tool to to tell people that you know if you look beyond the sun you're going to find a world of possibility out there and you're going to tell you and by this time when you realize that and you seek clarity on that you wouldn't be saying the things that you say right now about yourself and about mm -hmm. I can't do it because there's a world of possibility out there that you can. Yeah, I said, uh, I used to say I can't. And, and then I, it became, I'm dropping the tea. I am dropping the tea. I can. I can. I can. I, 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 can, I will. And I will do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's funny when you hear those doubtful, cynical thoughts coming in. And just the awareness of them is like in Vipassana. Okay, I'm aware of you, but you don't control me anymore. That whole thing, we go back to the controlling thoughts because you realize you have your own thoughts. Those thoughts are programmed thoughts. Those thoughts are thoughts of people that projected onto you. So like staying in a space of clear energy, like what are you doing to clear your energy and make sure that your thoughts are your thoughts? <laughs> because yes, indeed, I do believe that other people's thoughts can creep in, try and creep in to your reality. And my reality is definitely not your reality and you can't walk a hundred miles or a hundred miles in, or even five miles or a mile in my shoe. Right. Our perception is vastly different. And with, with that perception, though, being that you have a different percep perception to me, we can come together through adversity to try and find a solution to any problem and thus making it reality. Amen. And, uh, you know, that to me is like we go back to our roots. And you got some rich roots. You're from Australia. <laughs> and I am fascinated by that land the power of the land there i've never been but i've been in spirit i know that um and it, it just has so much magic i'm wondering if you feel like any of your roots um have uh have influenced you i don't know so much whether the whether the tribal lands have really influenced me i think it's just my own uh, my own research my own uh, academics my own experiences that i've had throughout life that have kind of shaped me to to be who i am and and what i'm all about um there can be a lot of people out there that will say oh you're just you know you're just a high achiever you're just ambitious you're this and you're that but underneath it all i'm not about myself 
I am never about myself. In fact, I do a lot more community uh, and proactive uh, things than, than I do taking care of myself. Um, just like for Summer Fusion Media, when I first started that uh, back in February, um, I, I went in and I said, you know what? I am already successful. Went on the... Um, went on the notion that I am already successful, I am a woman, and I think that there are a lot of women out there that, that are uh, unheard. And so with that plight, I kind of turned around and said, you know what, maybe, maybe it's my time to help other people, my, my time to help other women. And so, and it wasn't just about women, it was just about, you know, women just happens to be the thing at my particular time and point in time which is leading on to grander and greater things. And, and so with that said, um, here, here you are on a show on Soma Fusion and speaking whatever you need to speak about with no judgment, no, no reaction to, to, oh, well, you're not doing the show your, uh, my way. It's you're doing what you naturally do at best. And I leave it at that. And I believe in, in the boldness and the beauty of the voices that we can collectively share. Right. And, yeah, for listeners who don't know, this, this is predominantly women on this Soma Fusion. I think, what, there's one guy who has a show? Uh, two. two. Two men. Uh, the rest. Uh, um, uh, correction, three. <laughs> oh. Three men. Three men. But it, it was the the initial idea was all women. Yeah. And it was because, you know, the radio industry is, uh, you know, especially in internet radio, uh, does lack um, lack a lot of uh, female radio show hosts. And my, I was giving the opportunity for female, sh- uh, female hosts to have their voices heard. Nothing more, nothing less you know, uh, to get their word out because my word, like I said, I can't walk a mile in your shoe, but you can share your experiences and with those experiences together, you know, right. we can learn something. And it's so funny. I think one day you and I were reflecting and we <laughs> saw how much heart is in this, this radio network, like a lot of heart shows, this heart, that heart, that heart, heart, heart. It's all heart. It's all love. Mm-hmm. It's all sharing this love for all of these topics that we cover. And when I first started Summer Fusion two years ago, I, I actually said, you know, I'm going to build a business which is heart-centered. Wow, that's so rad. And that, that's really what I wanted to share with our listeners today. Katie, thank you so much for um, joining me. I, um, I know that both of us are a little crunched for time today, so... Um, but yeah, I really appreciate you and everything you do. And absolutely, um, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this world, this Soma Fusion Network world. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad um, to have you. I really am. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to have you. And I, I wish you every single success that there is in, in your new career as a, uh, a therapist. <laughs> is it a hypnotist? <laughs> yes. Um, yes, I will be a hypnotherapist in December. That will be my t- title, but right now I'm master hypnotist. Oh, there you go. That's, that's so. nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we that's can get the work done. Definitely, it's definitely not a magic show. <laughs> no, it's not a magic show. I'm not interested in the magic show. <laughs> but we are interested in creating magic. Yes, always. In all ways, we create magic with light and uh love yeah (laughs) all right i'll see everybody next week thank you